There are words that we say that we never forget, words that we hear. You're standing up in front of a church and you look at someone and say, I do, and you're married, right? Or that moment when a nurse looks at you and says, what is the name of this child? And you say a word and that's it. That word is stuck to that kid, right? Done. You hope you say it right. But, uh, there are other words, like I, I've never been on trial, but I, I assume it's a, a s sensation when you are asked, or how do you plead? When you say guilty or not guilty, you don't quickly forget that, that moment. There's another set of words that we, we do not forget hearing, and they are last words. Think of the last words of loved ones before they die, right? You, the last words, if there's any words that are going to be honored, it's going to be the last words. So those, we, we don't forget them. So what are the last words when it comes to Scripture? Right? If Scripture is the Word of God for us, the people of God, and it is the guidance for us on how to live as faithful followers of Jesus, the last words will come in the last book in, in Revelation. And they cover two topics, two things that show up. This is what Scripture wants you to hear. If you've got done reading all the way through Scripture, here is what you're going to hear at the end. The last words of Scripture for how we live as followers of Christ. We are going to look at those words today. And first it talks about how Jesus judges and those who accept the forgiveness are judged innocent and welcome into the New Jerusalem. And then the other set, uh, the second, the, the last chapter, talks about the leaves of the tree for the healing of the nations. First, the good news of the coming kingdom of God. We read that the new Jerusalem is going to come down. The renovation of all of creation will occur. Those who have fallen asleep in the Lord, which is how Paul describes death, will awaken. All those who have fallen asleep will awaken. As all who are judged... Those who follow Jesus are welcomed into life eternal in the kingdom of God to come. And so this is how we tend to think of Jesus often, right? Jesus is the judge. Jesus is the one who determines what happens to us in the life after this life. The one who offers forgiveness, and if we accept it, we, we know where we are going. And this, this forgiveness that he offers, the judge offers, we know when it was offered. On the cross, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now, this is the moment. If you ever wonder when were you saved, that's the moment. Right now, you, are, you can accept that offer at, at one, whatever point it is. Like, I can tell you I accepted the offer of forgiveness my sophomore year, uh, second floor, Missouri Hall, up, up at Truman. Like, that, that's when I accepted the offer. But the offer was originally made by the judge on the cross when Jesus says, Father, forgive them. And so I was saved, you were saved, we were offered that salvation 2,000 years ago on a Friday by the one who judges us. If Jesus is, the if Jesus is the judge offering us forgiveness, that what determines what happens after death, whether we accept that or not, we each have to make that decision. Will we accept the forgiveness that Jesus offers? And maybe today you need to hear that again. Maybe today you need to hear again that there is a judge, someone with ultimate authority, who has looked down upon your worst moments, who has looked down upon everything you've done or will do, and has said, forgive them. Right? Maybe you need to hear that you are forgiven and accept that gift that you have been offered since the day before you were born. Maybe you need to know that there is no sin, fault, Error, act of commission or omission that can separate you from the love of God. Right? Then I want you to hear the good news yet again. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You're going to hear that again in a few minutes. And I want you to say it to each other. You need to hear that often. I want eye contact. Look at the people to your left and right and tell them you are forgiven. Seriously, look at each other. Tell each other, you are forgiven. There is no sin and no lapse that can separate you from the love of God. There is no mistake, no past, no decision that can change that you are welcome here and welcome to this table. You are always welcome to this table, for it is Christ's table. Always. In this life, and you are always welcome into the kingdom of God that is to come by the authority of Jesus Christ, who is the judge who has declared you forgiven. 
Now that's one part of the good news of today. That's the first part of the, the last words of Revelation. But it's not all of it, because there's a second part of how Revelation wraps it up. Like there's a second part of what you need to know before you finish reading this book. And it talks about not just forgiveness, but the healing. Because the two always go together in Scripture. In Scripture, you, get, you always find them together. If you, you go all the way back into... Um, it's not just at the end of Revelation. You go back into Second Chronicles 7. You go back when Solomon is blessing the temple. And, and uh, he gets on blessing, uh, praying for the temple. And God comes to him at that night and says to him, I have heard your prayers. And if my people will humble themselves and come to me and pray to me, I will forgive them and I will heal their land. There's that combination. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And this is something Jesus does all the time. Forgiving and healing, it's always back to back. You'd be hard pressed to flip open a page of scripture and not find Jesus forgiving and healing, or at least talking about it. They're always combined. When Jesus is uh, teaching in, in a, a small house and all the town has come to hear him, and it's so crowded that some friends can't get their, their, their paralyzed friend into the house, they go up on the roof and then they break a hole through the ceiling. I always feel bad for the homeowner. They break a hole in the ceiling and they lower their paralyzed friend in front of Jesus and Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. And some people in the crowd start muttering. You know how people mutter. Can you really say that? And uh, Jesus says, responds, you know, uh, just to show you that the Son of Man has authority over this, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk. Right? He forgives the sins, and then he heals them. Get up and take a walk. And he takes up, and he walks out of there. Jesus spends his time forgiving and healing. And in, in, the, in the next verses after that, Mark 2, Jesus says to the gathered crowd, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. You hear the parallel there? He's talking about the sick and the sinners both needing what he is coming to offer. And he's talking about himself as a doctor, and that's actually the right verb here. Whenever Jesus saves, the, the verb there is sozo. And in Greek, that's the verb for what a doctor does. Right? And we still have it today. What's a doctor do? When you're in a horrible car accident, you go to the hospital, what does a doctor do? The doctor saves you. Right? That's the language in Scripture as well. Jesus forgives, and then Jesus saves the way that we talk about doctors saving, talk about healing. And so, while there's this tendency to focus on the forgiveness that Jesus offers forgiveness and thus a place in the New Jerusalem, that's not the entirety of the good news because we have to then also see Jesus as the doctor who heals us. Visually, what it would look like is Jesus first has the black robes of the judge on, but after you are declared innocent, the black robes come off and under the black robes are the white coat of a doctor because that's what we need next, isn't it? Right? That's what we see in Jesus' ministry. He forgives sin and then heals fever. He forgives sins and then the paralyzed walk. He forgives sins and then demons are cast out. He for forgives sins and then life is restored. And as we accept Jesus as our judge, what comes next is then Jesus is our doctor. Jesus is our doctor. Following in his footsteps, addictions are tamed, sins fade, Forgiveness blooms, and patience and gracefulness. You know how you can be patient and graceful on occasion? It goes from being on occasion to a way of life, as we are healed of our own broken motives. For as we follow him, we grow to resemble him. And it's not just individual lives either. Families once broken can be made whole. Communities once shattered can find themselves gathering in new ways, and churches that once floundered can heal and thrive again. And it's not just there, because if you notice that uh, what we read in Revelation is not that, uh, it's the leaves for the tree for the healing of the nation, right? It's the healing not just of families, not just communities, not just churches. The commission is to go and to heal the nations. And if that sounds a little bit bold, well, it sounded bold to seven beleaguered churches 2,000 years ago, as, as bold as it sounds today. But that is how we are sent forth as forgiven people, not who have to endure what comes next, but we are forgiven people to set forth to serve and to heal all that we encounter. 
My friends, if you had to describe how you're being saved, I think the best way to say it, this is true of me, is I, I am saved and being saved daily. I, I am saved and forgiven, and I am being saved daily as I follow Jesus and am being healed of all that is broken in me. Jesus was dead and now lives. He is the firstborn of new creation, opens the door for us to follow him into the kingdom of God. And we hear the last words that he has for us in the word of God and in scripture is that he is willing to be our judge and then our doctor. And so I want you to make sure you hear both today. Maybe you need to hear that you are forgiven yet more, that Jesus the judge forgives you that you are forgiven, nothing can separate that you, you from that forgiveness. Maybe you need to hear once more that what is broken can be made whole, that what is bent can be made straight, whether it be body or life or family or community or, dare we say, even nation. We hear the good news that Christ is both our judge and our doctor, and that is the good news of Easter. Thanks be to God. Amen.